I'm going to do a video on how to fix rust in a radiator support. This is for a HQ, HQ Kingswood, which is just out here on the rotisserie. going to show you how I go about doing it. So this has been sandblasted and primed in two pack, I think it's Epotech. First thing you want to do is you want to go and drill some holes. And the reason we do that is when you pull panels off, because I'm going to untick it, is when you put the panel back on to know that it's back in the right spot. So you can chuck a Cleco in there and know that it's in the exact same spot as where it was. It's not going to be a mil off. It's not going to be five mils off. It's going to be exactly where it was. Next thing you want to do is get your spot welds every so often. So you want to go through and you want to drill out spot welds. Now what I do is you could go sand or punch it, but it's quicker. Get a new drill bit, sharp drill bit. Dead in the spot. Just drill it a little bit. And then later, after they're all drilled, you come back with one of these. You can use these ones, but these go a bit blunt. You get a fair bit of run out on the tip as well. You can use these ones. And just drill it through, just through the skin. drilled out the spot welds that I can find. The next part is, is you want to get this is a paint scraper you just want to edge it in under there slowly go through each spot weld so if it won't pry off drill a bit more. You don't really want to go using a chisel because you look at the thickness difference if you go smashing a chisel in there you're gonna bust up all this it's gonna end up wavy you don't want it to end up looking like a dog's breakfast by smashing a chisel in there. A few spots if they're difficult, yeah, you can use a chisel for parts that are easy to straighten out. But the long length of it, if under here is still good, you don't want to mess with it. You want to just go bang, straight back on, fits up, all flush, no problems. So if you've done everything properly, at this point, you should do a little bit of persuasion, pop straight off, and there we go. I'm back on the repair, so it's been in Ranix. Well, it's gone all crusty and rank. Got my step drill here. Now what happens is, is you get rust pits. And if you want to know how bad the rust pits are, how thin they are, whether or not you can save it, is you just find a pit. And that goes through like butter. So that section's a bit thicker. The rust pits here. So that tells you if it goes through that easy, the rust pit's too deep to save. So there's the piece laid over. I'll just 
do it to there and I'll cut a little patch around there and weld it in. So I actually remembered I wanted to change the layout of the video from portrait to landscape so I'm doing it halfway through the video. Sorry about that. I've got the new patch on, clamped up. Now what you want to remember is here, is when you clamp it and get this butted up flush, if you go and mark there and mark there and bend it, this piece is on the outside of this piece. So you're going to find this is 1.6, you're going to get 1.6 and 1.6, it's going to be 3 millimeters too wide. So when you do that, you want to factor in that measurement, that it's the same measurement there to there. Got the patch over, it's a bit underbent at the moment, so it fits really snug. And that bender's got a bit of run out, so I'll have to hammer and dolly it. Now I could form this around, but this is 1.6, and 1.6 is really bad form. So what I'll do is, is I'll cut through there and I'll weld it. Like I really don't want to go form in 1.6, this is zinc. If this was mild steel, it'd be really easy, but zinc's just too hard. It's got too much tensile strength. Other thing I don't want to disturb is these panel clips here. So, I mean, I could cut them out, but you see they got a slight little recess. And if you can leave things that are original, so you know they're in the same spot, sometimes you're better off just doing that. So then you don't get down the track and go, oh, well, this is three millimeters out and you've got to mess around with it. See the run out that I'm talking about with the bender. Really need to go adjust it. At this point, what you want to do is, now that you're getting closer to the patch being fitted, you want to go and drill a hole here, chuck a Klecko in, another hole here, chuck a Klecko in. Otherwise, if you start cutting and keep cutting and keep fitting it up, expecting it to be in the same spot, it won't be. So you want to be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. You got to hit us up to get a pimped out ride. You got to hit us up. Now when you cut patches in, I've got this tech screwed in. What you do is, is if you put the angle grinder and you cut in on an angle like that, is you'll cut further over that way on the panel underneath, knowing that this patch is going to move that way once it goes into position, because it's overlapping at the moment. Now when you cut here, you know that you can cut straight down and when this moves over, it'll butt up flush there and flush there. So you can see how that's cut there, but that has been cut in on an angle. This is a one millimetre disc, and this is 1.6 millimetre steel. So when you cut in on the angles, you want to factor in the thickness, the angle, all that sort of stuff. If I chucked it there and scribed it and cut directly on the line, I'd be too far that way, because this needs to move that way. This is what I mean when I say it'll come up, butt up flush, I'll split it there, I'll go chuck a piece of RHS under it when I cut the other side so I know it's not going to bend out. So that's how it fits up there. You can just weld it in. So now I'm going to chuck a couple of tacks on here, get that into place, got a piece of wood under it, keep it straight, clamp down and then I'll go and cut through that to fall through. Chuck some tacks on it, take the screws out. Just a bit of a side note, like if you watch my videos and you do it different, you do these repairs. Don't do them the same as me, you don't use the same equipment, like that's all good. Like I had one dude, he commented on my videos and he um he disliked a couple as well and I thought shit, he must know what he's talking about. So I went on his profile and he just had the strangest videos, hey, like. And I think he actually disliked a couple of my videos because what I do is is if you get panels and you do a weld and I'll do it I'll do a bit on it later 
is if you do a world and you do a proper world, you're going to get a glob underneath. Whereas you see these people, they do these little pretty tack worlds on top of each other. And you flip it over and you can still see the seam in it. So I think maybe he thought my sh worlds were shit. I don't know. Anyways, back to it. I'll put a bit of a time lapse on. Got the old piece out, new pieces in. So you want to grind this stuff. This is the zinc coating. You need to get rid of that. Otherwise your welds will spit shit. Got that there. Just got to fix that up. Get a little bit of a nicer gap in it. I've got my piece of copper that I've bashed out. This is just how many mil thick copper and you just smash it with a hammer. A little bend on it. You've probably seen it in my last video. Sneak that bad boy up there. And if you do get a gap, which I won't because I'll fix that, it just helps you put a lot more heat in. There's your gap all the way through there. A little bit of a gap there, but not really because I'll run 0.9 wire. That's barely over a millimeter. Got the patch tack welded in. It's all got good gaps. Just got to cut out a patch there. Just got to fix that. We need to go fix a run out of my bender so it doesn't happen again. And um, yeah, over here it all fits nice. Just got to cut out that section again. And then next will be that rust and that rust to fix.
it's all welded up. I was saying before about big welds and bad welds and globby welds. So what I meant was when you weld, you want to weld all the way through the panel. You don't want to weld just on top of the panel because it means you're not going to get the proper penetration. There's an example there and an example just there. So people will do these pretty looking welds that stack on top of each other and you turn the panel over, another little section just there, and you can still see the seam. If you're welding like that everywhere, it's all right if you do it once there, once there, once there, it's not too bad. But if you're doing all your welds like that, your patches are shit and they're gonna rust from the inside out. All right, so I'm gonna start drilling through these spot welds, make sure to drill a hole the Clecos as well and gonna drill out the spot welds under there I've unpicked this section off, they're both rusty. So to repair this is I can either, where it's outlined in white, cut out a patch, or I can make all the way up to here and do all this section as well. Thing is, if I do that, I have to put a weld there and a weld there. So for what it's worth to not have to remake all this, is I can just do a patch and weld it all through there. There's a little rust hole there, so I'll cut that out and do a little patch. Now I've cut the rusty piece out of here. What I do is I'll use this to make a template. Now I've done that knowing that if that goes floppy, I can chuck it straight back on and click hole it. Give me a new patch, chuck it in, tack weld it. And I know that it's gonna line up exactly where it was because I'm gonna click hole back on. So there we go, just chiseled it that way a bit because it wasn't meeting up where it was supposed to. Let's close that gap, take it off, and I'll gap that one up. So it's all welded in now. Along that section where I've done the weld, I've welded in a corner. Now, it's not too much of a big deal. You don't really want to do that. But if I was going to weld on the flat, is it would have messed up where I got my Clecos. So here's where the inner guard bolts to from memory. And the battery tray bolts over. So you won't be able to see under there. So it's not too big of a deal. I'll give it a clean up the flat disc. See how she looks. So on this patch, I've got my Cleco holes every so often. Underneath, 
it's rusted and it all needs to be replaced under here so what I'll do is I'll drill a cleco hole here and here on the very corner and that will let me know where the patch goes otherwise I could put it there mark it with pen there's my lines where I'm going to cut it out cleco hole line where I'll cut it out cleco hole what I will do is I'll just make a whole straight piece, straight patch and this section here where it's contoured and under there I'll do that later because this is 1.6 I'm going to try and bash that out especially out of zinc because I distort the whole panel There's that contour I was talking about. For the sake of making it easier to make the template, cut this out so I don't have to worry about it. So there it is all tacked in with this primer here it's a good idea to sand it off both sides what happened there is i got a blow through and the primer when you go to do the tack it'll go what's this shit and the tack will bubble up and then you go to do another one and it'll just fall straight out but i'll be able to fix that up it's not a problem flip it up look on the other side there's the other side. All 
all the welding is finished. And I'll flip it over. There's underneath. Like we always do with this town. Get pulled over in they new V The good life, let's go on a living spree Shit, they say the best things in life are free The good life, it feel like Atlanta It feel like LA It feel like Miami It feel like NY Summertime shy ah. Now throw your hands up in the sky So I wrote the good Y'all pop the trunk I pop the hood Ferrari And she got the good And she got that ass I got to look Sorry Yo, it's got to be, cause I'm seasoned haters, give me them salty looks. So there we go, a bit of rattle cam primer over the repair. Just keeps you honest, really. Shows up how shit your work is, or how good it is bust up there that I've got to fix and there's the rest of the world that's just got to grind down cut a patch out there and next I've got to start this piece So next section I'll do is this piece. It's basically the same repair as the other side, so I don't think I'll even do much of a video on it. But I'll show you how it looks before and after. I've got the new piece all cut out and bent up almost except for lip that's got to go here so that's how it fits up just got to bend this little lip next got a few more tack welds on it so in the patches you can see they're squared off they're not rounded because this is 1.6 it doesn't matter you don't have to round it off now I've done a video on my patrol fixing gutter rust I've done a bit about why you should round the patches so if you want to go see that go do it or if you don't don't do it there's the tacks coming through before I fully weld it I'll grind off all that primer so it doesn't fester up end up with a rank weld so this is a door skin hammer and this is better than a planishing hammer when you have to go through with the dolly underneath it. Otherwise, this bad boy here that I bought from a second hand shop for about five bucks, probably seven years ago, if you just shape the end, flatten it, that's perfect as well for aligning panels. So there's the patch all welded in, that's the underside. There's the top side, so I'll give it a grind and see how it looks. Now one thing I can't stress enough is when you do patches, if you've got a grind on both sides, you want your patches to butt up perfectly flush. If you do a patch and one side bulges, the other side's going to be low. So you're going to end up grinding out the high spot on this side ending up with it low, running out the high spot on this side, ending up with it low, and your patch is going to come paper thin right through the centre of the weld. So yeah, you basically want to just knock the weld, start off knocking the weld off, and nothing more. Don't grind this side, don't grind that side, just knock the top of the weld off, 
and then if your panel has warped from welding, you go and get your planishing hammer and your dolly, and you straighten it out, then it's nice and straight, and then you can go over it and smooth it in a bit more. So there's the repairs done. I don't think I'll have much problem with finishing them. I think I might get away with just high fill primer. There's the excess that I've got here. What I do is, if it's a piece you can cut off with the angle grinder, leave an excess, because the amount of times you can make up a patch and it's one millimeter too short, two millimeters too short, and you go, shit, I've got to start again. So just leave that. That'll only take five minutes to cut off and finish with the grinder. It's just good insurance. Yeah, there's the rest. Patch I need to do there. And then flip it up. So yeah, that's it. Next part is I've got to put this on. Turns out I actually did have a couple of holes for the Queco still. So the next part is I've got to make up a new piece for this. So what you do is you get a straight edge, line it up, and you find at what point the curve starts to come in. So we can start here at about 80. Go over to here. Start at about 960. When you make the patch up, you need to know the width. So get a piece of paper, that'll tell you the width, snap it off, cut it off. I'm going to add some thickness as well, I'll probably add about 15 millimeters. So then I can trim it down, I don't want to go make it too short. So I've cut this piece out, it's time to go press up a new bit. This is what I was talking about a few clips ago, with the run out on the bender. Because these dies just go on, and you tighten them down is you want to align the lip I didn't have them aligned that's why the last patch ran out so you see they got gaps there but here they line up so you want to check that now with pan brakes and press brakes is you can press yourself into trouble or fold yourself into trouble it's not that stupid to go and get a piece and chuck it in do a couple of bends and figure out what you need to bend first it's not so hard with this but when you get an intricate amount of bends as you can easily mess yourself so i got the piece pressed up i did stooge it though i got this section i cut a small bit off to use as the template now the first one i pressed myself into trouble as i was talking about it's all good though i can just press up another section in the little bender I really only need to do that bit there because all that needs to get replaced anyway. So I'll make a piece that will join up to there. So it'll just be an extra one weld. So honestly, if you do a patch like this, make it out of 1.2. I should be making this out of 1.2. I don't have any. So I'm doing it out of 1.6, which is stupid, but I'm doing it. I've got to make this piece around here and I'm going to make it out of 1.6 and I'm going to try and stretch that edge and try and shrink that edge 1.6 so 1.6 is 33% thicker than 1.2 so it's 33% harder to form so unless I come over here and do what I've done before and cut my workbench up to get some 1.2 I'm going to have to go buy some from the steel shop which I should do but I haven't but you should Right, so I got the piece cut out, pressed up. I'm not going to make that section there out of one piece because I would probably smash my head through a wall out of frustration. So I'm going to put that piece there and I'm going to take it over to the shrinker and the stretcher. I'm going to try and shrink this and then I'm going to realise it won't work because it's too heavy. I'll stretch this edge here because it's easier to stretch steel than it is to shrink it. So I'll give you a bit of a look in a couple of minutes show you how I go. So this is how it looks after a few cuts and a few stretches. So there it goes just like that. Thereabouts, roundabouts. I uh, just got to do another stretch there. Another stretch there I should say. But I'll trim it to fit 
and then see if I can just get around shrink in there instead of putting another cut. So there it is, all in place. I've tried to screw it there, but it just kept walking. The screw did. So I've got it tacked. Good gaps there. They're all about millimetres worth gaps. This is nice and flush. Probably maybe almost too flush. So I'll have to put a slit in there for that section. Or hammer that weld to stretch it. Bring that gap back. Um, yeah, I'll chuck a few welds on and then see how it looks. I finished welding all this up yesterday, so it's the next day. I started this last night as well, or yesterday. Um, this has kicked up a little bit because it was twisted from unpicking it, so when I've cut this off, it sprung up. Now, a lot of people don't own a pan brake. I didn't own one for years because they weigh 1.2 tonnes and they're impossible to move. But I used to get a sheet metal joint, local sheet metal joint, to press up sills and gutters and stuff. So if you don't have a pan brake, I would suggest going to a local sheet metal joint, go to a few and get some quotes. And you can get them to press up a whole section from here to here because they'll have their CNC brake and they can do it out of one bit. The problem you can get is if you press up this and then press up that and that is you can get little differences. Whereas if it's a whole piece, you know it'll be consistent the whole way through. You won't have any differences. So I used to buy from the local sheet metal joint. They would do like a section from here to here, like or a whole piece. They would probably only charge me like 40 or $50. But the thing is, is I'd have to wait for them to press it up. Like they'll get their apprentice to do it. It'll cost maybe four or five bucks in materials. So they make good money, only take them 10 or 15 minutes. Whereas this here, this took probably took me 20 minutes by the time I cut it out. 20 or 30 minutes. But um, it saves me driving to town, obviously. And it saves me waiting to get it done.
So quickly, before I go back to a time lapse, I've welded it from the underside, as you can see. And the reason I've done that is I'm just going to paint them welds. Whereas I welded it from this side, I'll have a higher bead, I've got more to grind off. Because I've welded from this side, penetrations come through and the penetration doesn't have much height. So I save grinding discs and flat discs, which is good because they're expensive. sections completely finished I've just sprayed some rattle can primer on it just to see how it looks there's little points there from where I've done the slits so if you want to fix them I don't know if I will because you won't even see this you can weld underneath it build underneath up with weld and then you can grind it round or you can panel bead it, but it would be easier just to weld underneath, build it up and then grind it rounded. But um, yeah, it's come out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Got my holes there from trying to tech screw it down when the tech screws wouldn't hold. I've just got to fix that little bust up there. And then over here, I just got these patches, that one that's finished. And then I've just got to do this one much of a muchness it's the same repair as that one and then yeah they're just ready to weld them back on and weld this on drill some plug weld holes trim that excess and it's basically finished there is a little rust hole over here that i'll just weld up and underneath there's a brace section where your guards bolt to so i'm going to take that off and then yeah patch that or make up the holes so i've gone and redrilled my cleco holes because they're on the wrong side of my cut line they're on the left side now i can go and scribe this and cut this section out and then what i can do is take this piece over to here what i've done is i've marked out there the profile of it to know where to trim it. Obviously I have the other piece as a template, but that lets me know there where it needs to meet up to fit back to original. There it is, tack welded in. Take it off and I'll fully weld it now. So there's the piece basically finished. I've got a little bit more grinding to do, but I ran out of belt sander belts. But it's basically finished. There's a few knobblies and stuff, but 
I'll sort them out later. So I'll just line this up and see how it looks. So that's a the line there. That section there, I've got to do a little bit of tweaking. I have sanded that down a bit more than where it was supposed to be. I got a little bit carried away, but it really doesn't matter. Oh, hang on, it's got to line up to there with the holes. So yeah, it's like two millimeters lower than it was, but it doesn't matter. And then next I've just got to do the nuts. There they are. So I'll unpick that and then build it on the underneath. All right, so I've got to fix this piece where it's ran out. Now what I've done is clamp this piece of SHS down put a tack weld, put a tack weld, I'll use this as my buck to panel beat against that because this is so heavy, it's 1.6, if I used dolly, the dolly would move and bounce, I wouldn't be able to get it straight but now I've got a straight edge, angle iron would have been better but I can't be bothered going and finding a piece to cut it up. The next part I need to do is scribe a line there, cut the excess off. Um, I've just got to drill the plug welds for this piece. I'm going to drill it on this piece and weld from the back. That way when I grind the welds, the front will only have the excess of the penetration from the plug weld to grind. I don't have to grind a whole weld. I'm just going to do some plug holes there and then plug holes there, obviously. I'm going to be doing that because this is the easier side to grind. And here's the other pieces. I've just got to paint them in rust kill and this piece in rust kill and then basically chuck it back on. I've got to put some weld through primer on. So this is the copper based weld through primer I use. This is a cavity wax I use. This setup from factory has a drain hole here and on the other side. So I don't see a purpose of the drain hole because the hole is there, if you're driving on the road in the wet, which this probably won't, the water would wash up and you'd get all the spray that would go up in there and the moisture would sit. Now for illustration purposes, this thing here, this is how it comes out. I'll try not to cover my camera. But the jets are blocked, so instead of it spraying one direction, it'll spl spray in like four directions. I've got all the plug holes drilled. The last thing I need to do is I need the nut welded under there. So you want to make sure to get this one right. You want to line the holes up. I haven't put bolts in there because I left the bolts in the mezzanine. I can't be bothered getting them. And yeah, you just want to sort of like eyeball it, make sure it's square, drill a hole, then weld the nut on. I've got all these patches done. The nuts welded in. Down the other side's finished. Over here, all of this has been sanded back. I've sanded it back with Scotch Brite and some thinners. What I'm going to do now is I've sanded all that. I'm going to go get my kill rust and I'm going to paint all the inside. I'll paint all this everywhere that's going to be sealed. And then when it dries, I'll put the patch on, mark it out with a pen where the plug welds are going to go. Then I'll sand back the plug weld spots. I'll spray them in copper primer and then I'll weld it up. So I use rust kill, which is sitting over in my Milo tin. And um, you could use two pack epoxy if you want. And then black, I just use this stuff. Um, it's just a single pack stuff. This is all zinc. So I'm really not that worried. And um, yeah, I'll see how it goes. You can paint this stuff on with a brush because it's not going to be seen, so it doesn't matter. And I don't like cleaning spray guns, but you just want to make sure, don't do it too thick. Like, that as a first coat is probably perfect. This is only single pack stuff, so you don't want to lay it on too thick, otherwise it's not going to cure so well. Waiting for paint to dry and it's 12 degrees. No heat lamps, so I'm going to use my air fryer nearly seven o'clock so it's time to pack up pretty good illustration of how flogged this panel was you see all this rust that it had 
we've got the paint drying over here and the air fryer sorting out the other bits but yeah she's looking good now these patches are ready to weld on so I've gone and tech screwed them in and I've marked where each plug weld will go and along here all the plug welds so what I'll do is I'll take it back off and I'll sand where the plug weld is Now I've got the lower piece welded on. Next it's time to do these braces here and on the other side. So I've got the lower brace welded on. I've got the other brace welded on. I've just done the captive nuts that go on the top. And she's all covered in copper base weld through primer. Don't worry about these, it doesn't matter, it's all going to be hidden and it's probably good to have more on there than less. So I'll get welding and see how she looks. Next I just got to take this brace off, not that interesting of a repair really. So this rust here is just little scaly rust. I think I'll get away with just sanding it back, but I'll see how it looks. Got it unpicked, figured while I'm here I might as well do the other side because there was a little pit of rust just there which I can just pad weld over that because it's the most smallest amount. Um, there was some pits there so I've step drilled through them and then on the other side got a section there that needs to be patched and a section there. And those little pits there, I can just go and put a few little tacks over it, grind them down. I'm finished for the day, so what I'll do is I'll spray these pieces in acid. This is Ranex phosphoric acid, and this can sit overnight. And what it will do is it'll penetrate through, rust convert it, and it also softens up the rust. So spray it with that, come back the next day, and I can sand it off. And um, yeah, paint it with rust kill and my weld through primer, weld it back on. Next day, there's the parts rust converted. So now I'm good to just sand it off with a fresh file sander belt. There's the pieces there, the patch and the pits, and the other side. Finished welding up the little pits and a couple of holes. So gone over with some thinners and then some rust kill rust guard I should say it's called rust guard and copper weld through primer just got the air fryer on it just to dry it out because it's probably about 10 or 11 degrees and then ready to weld on soon there's the pieces plug welded on just need to do some grinding again managed to snap off a couple of tech screws so there's a few extra welds there give it a grind see how it looks
So I've basically got the whole panel finished. There's the braces that I've re-welded on. This brace here I've re-welded on. All this section is all finished and done. I fixed my bust up that I had there, I think it was. Um, all the welds been ground down. Spent about an hour with the angle grinder and the file sander. There's the braces under there all finished. The brace there finished. Knobbly that I've got to knock off, a couple of them. I've just put it in rattle can primer for now. I'll probably get it sandblasted again. I've welded the holes up there that were there. I might skim that with filler. I might skim there with filler. It's nice and curved there. Got the um, bolt hole. Yeah, there's that section there where it's got a couple of points, but I can panel beat them, or I'll just skim it with filler, but probably panel beat and fill. Over here, I might skim that area with filler. I can still go over it and just tidy it up with the planishing hammer. And then this bit over here, all finished and sanded. So she's done. And next I've just got to do the little protrusions where the light mounts up to. So I'll go get the light mounted in. Go fold up some protrusions, both sides. There's all the rust that I've cut out of it. Um, yeah, be glad to not do another one of these. So that's the repair all done and finished. If you've gotten this far and you haven't exited out the video. Um, if you enjoyed watching, like. If you didn't enjoy it, dislike it. Whatever you want to do. Um, if you've got any questions about the equipment, or the gear that I use, leave a comment. Um, if I get a good response, positive response, I'll probably make more videos. I've got a few on the channel, so subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And um, yeah, if you've got an expert opinion, go make your own video and I'll critique it. But yeah, cheers for watching and um, until next time.